Hi everyone and welcome to today's video with PowerUpWithPhil.com where we'll be exploring the power of Power Apps and Power Automate to help you stay ahead of the weather. As we all know, the weather can be unpredictable and it's currently freezing here in the UK. Um, so that's why we've created this solution using Apps and Automate to help you stay informed and prepared for any weather conditions. So in just a few clicks, we will get the weather forecast for any location and then send an alert to you if the weather's going to be bad. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the power of Power Apps and Automate to help you stay ahead of the weather. So let's start with our flow first off. If you're going to make.powerautomate.com and create a new flow from blank. For this particular flow, we're going to be using the trigger of Power Apps V2. We're then going to be using the action of Get the Forecast for Tomorrow, which uses the MSN Weather API. And then we're going to add a final element or final action, which is respond to a Power App or flow. But let's work these through first off. By starting with the flow as the trigger, we want the next action to look up the weather forecast for tomorrow based on the location that we provided within our power app so in the v2 action if you add an input and select text input and let's call this location and this is going to be our location parameter in this demo we're going to be looking up based on postcode but as you can see here from the tooltip for this action there are other inputs you can use such as city region state country landmark and also latitude and longitude values if you have them so then adding the get the forecast for tomorrow we're using the dynamic content which has been generated via our power apps v2 trigger which is going to be location and for the units in this one we are selecting metric finally in this flow add an action which is respond to a power app or flow we're then going to be creating some more text output conditions which use dynamic content from the response of the get the forecast for tomorrow action here i've used the full body of the response which we may want to break down or you may want to break down further because there's a lot of information which comes back from this action but i'm specifically interested in conditions the day summary the night summary the chance of rain in the day the chance of rain in the night and the temperature high and low. Let's give this a spin. So if we test the flow and start it manually, we are asked to provide a location parameter. I'm going to be providing a postcode here and run flow. You'll see that in less than a second overall the postcode has been put as an input and we've asked for it to be in metric so using celsius as opposed to fahrenheit and the output available to us are all of these parameters i'm only interested in a few of those though which i want to expose back in my app so if we go to our respond to a power app or flow we'll see that we've got a nice 200 code here which means that the flow ran successfully or this action ran successfully we can also then see in the json format down here the parameters which we want to use in our application and then moving on to our alerting so once you've got to this stage see save your flow and give it a spin we then move into power apps so i've just created here a very basic shell of a canvas app which is using a rectangle and then labels for the title, a label here for where do you want the weather cast for, an input field, which is going to be our location parameter, which goes into our flow, and then a button, which simply says get tomorrow's forecast. So how do we link both the flow and the app together so we get the response within our app first off? Okay. So on the button of get tomorrow's forecast in the on select property, we want to link our flow here. So if we come down to the power automate section and click add flow, 
We'll see here that the flow, in this case, which is an instant flow because it's using that power apps trigger, is available for us to select. So if we tap that one, this loads the flow into our application. But on the on select property, we want to run this flow when somebody hits this button. So if we start typing the flow name, we'll get some IntelliSense suggestions back. And for this particular app, we want to run that flow. So let's hit run. And it's then asking us for the location, which is the required input parameter from our flow itself. So we could, of course, hard code a value in here, which would be in the format of a string. So for example, the postcode I gave you earlier, which is actually the postcode for Buckingham Palace. But we want to make it more dynamic than that. So if we look at the name of our text input field, which is by default text input one, let's use whatever somebody types in here to be the parameter, the location parameter that we want the webcast for tomorrow for. So I'm going to be using that control text input one dot text. So whatever is input into this area, once the button is clicked, the flow will run and return results. So let's give that a test. First off though, we'll get an error if we try to run this straight away because we haven't provided any input for the location parameter of where we want the forecast for. So if we go into the preview mode and let's enter a postcode that we want to search for. I'm going to again use the postcode for Buckingham Palace. And hit get tomorrow's forecast. If we come out of the preview mode and hover over or click the button uh, which has run our flow for us, you'll see that there are no error messages there. So our flow should have run successfully. If we go back to the flow history, we can see here that 15 seconds ago, our flow did run successfully. So that input parameter that I provided has given the expected output. But we've asked for this to be responded to. We've asked this to be pulled into our Power App. So let's see how we can get these conditions and make them visible in our app to our users. First off, let's add a text label and move this down here. And let's call this one of the parameters that we're getting through from Power Automate. So let's say we want the conditions. There's only two words here, which is mostly cloudy. So we're going to call this conditions. Then let's add another text label, like this below. But this time, what we need to do is get that content that from our Power App flow back into our application. To do that, on the button of where we run the flow, let's set use the set function here to capture the response of the flow into a variable. So I'm going to call this variable forecast and add a comma. We then need a closing bracket at the end here. Before we hit run again, or before we run this flow again, let's see then what we would need to do in order to get that condition back. We're going to need to change this text to the forecast variable that we've created. But at the moment, if we click forecast.conditions, this will be blank because the variable that we are using here hasn't got any properties associated with it because the flow hasn't yet been run since this variable was created. However, we can see that the dot conditions element, which is what we want to bring back, is available for us. So if we run this flow again, you'll see that the conditions mostly cloudy has been pulled back directly into our Power Apps flow. And we can repeat this for many of the other properties. So I'll go ahead and do that and see you in a second. So what I've done here is added more labels into the app. Headers, as we've seen before, which are text strings to identify what the data is going to be showing us. And then the same as we did for forecast.conditions, we've done forecast.day summary, forecast.night summary, forecast temperature high, and forecast temperature low. 
which shows tomorrow it's going to have lows of 4 degrees Celsius, which is quite cold. If we then try this with another postcode, so now we've got the postcode for Edinburgh Castle, which should hopefully show some different values for us. And yes, we can see that rain and snow showers are anticipated for that area with an even colder temperature of zero or the low of being zero. So that's just a very basic way to get tomorrow's forecast based on various parameters that we can enter in here. But let's say we wanted to alert people or yourself to when this temperature, for example, is going to be very cold. In this case, it's going to be zero or anticipated to be zero. If we come back into our flow and click edit, we're then going to add a new step or a new action before we respond to the Power App or flow. We're going to add a condition. In the left hand side of the condition, we want to use that parameter, which is temperature low and we want it to alert us by email to when that value is going to be less than what we, de what we deem to be bad. So I'm going to say 6 degrees, that's what I want to be alerted on um, to, to let me know when that's going to be the case. Then if we choose an operation in the yes field, we use the send an email action, I want to then send an email to myself with a subject of let's say weather alert for tomorrow and in the body of this I'm going to write the anticipated low temperature for tomorrow is less than 6 degrees Celsius and then why not let's pass in the actual value of what is anticipated to be tomorrow's weather low or temperature low so using that dynamic content we'll pull that back into our app and then let's say wrap up tomorrow I'm going to then set this email to be high importance and save. If we come back into our app, close our preview window, in the Power Automate field, because we've made changes to our flow, let's refresh that so that the app has the latest versions. You'll see that it has cleared the variables, that's because we've got the latest version of the Power Automate flow linked in with our Power App. However, if we now, using that same Edinburgh Castle postcode, run that flow again, as expected, our responses have come through and we can see the temperature is going to be zero. So let's go back to Power Automate and see what's happened. So we know that the flow ran successfully 13 seconds ago and that our condition went down the true path because zero is of course less than six degrees. If I therefore come to my emails and refresh that, we now have a weather alert which has sent has been sent over directly from Power Automate, which has alerted me to wrap up tomorrow because it's going to be cold in Edinburgh. So I hope that was helpful. It's a very basic overview of linking a Power Automate flow which is triggered from a power app um, and of course with the weather we're experiencing at the moment this may be useful for you keen to hear feedback of course with this solution as well you don't have to have this linked anywhere near an app you could have this on a schedule that runs several times a day to alert you to the weather tomorrow so and you could you know include other elements as well in your email output you could use different parameters or all of the parameters that come back from this get the weather forecast for tomorrow action. Um, and also if you really wanted to down the no route, so if the weather's going to be good tomorrow or greater than six degrees, 
sent another email letting you know it's time for um, better weather than we've been experiencing. I hope that was helpful. Any questions, please let me know in the comments.